Greetings. Uh, so this will be a follow-up to Atlantic Research Council, uh, Jackson Rip Holmes, uh, because I realized that <coughs> I omitted perhaps the most important communication, how it is that um, uh, Joe Biden may cause nuclear annihilation. I think I got you to the place where uh, anyone would, you, if, if there were children being murdered down the block and no one was doing about it, or Russia and China on the United Nations Security Council <coughs> with um, children in Gazans being ethnically cleansed and murdered every single day, um, how we could get into World War III. But here comes Atlantic Research Council, why I say to you that uh, Biden is trying to get us into nuclear annihilation. Um, uh, if there is a World War III, and it may have already started, uh, there's a report that Russia has uh, fired non-nuclear missiles into Egypt by tech show. Now it's uncorroborated, <coughs> but they have lots of, uh, it seems like it's a, it's a credible news source, tech show. Um, there's independent reports that Iran, Russia, and China are uh, actively uh, coordinating militarily uh, and um, against uh, Israel and its war crimes in Gaza. But, but let's, all right, so let's suppose then that there is a World War III, which may have actually already started and people don't realize it. Um, because if, if Russia's fired uh, missiles into Israel, I mean, uh, how do you define World War III better than that? Armed conflict by two superpowers. Um, all right, so let's think, waste time, you know, trying to pick that apart. Um, there's no control. We now have Atlantic Research Council uh, nine to twelve nuclear armed uh, countries, the worst of which are Israel and North Korea, but any of which could start a nuclear, a global thermonuclear war. Um, so if we look at the most likely to hit the button, and no one can stop them. Uh, number one, I think, unfortunately, or whatever, it's Israel, it's Netanyahu, because he said that if the International Criminal Justice, if the, if the International Court of Justice tells him to stop his war crimes, uh, he's not going to. So he's defying already international law. And you can imagine then if he is told that he will be brought to justice, uh, I think it's actually a foregone conclusion. He will hit the new, he, he, they, Israel uh, Atlantic Research Council, I assume you know this, they have lots of nukes. So they could start targeting, I, I don't know exactly how many they have, uh, but they can hit, let's just say, 10 countries. And that's uh, more than enough. Um, then you add North Korea, which is already gearing up on Gaza. Um, and so you have right there two probable uh, countries that would hit the button, at which point uh, it could be that nuclear nuclear war becomes inevitable because you get the uh, use it or lose it philosophy of other countries. Every country is a, a little bit paranoid and worried about a first strike, right? Um, and they don't want to become victims of a first strike. Uh, so they may launch with under the use it or lose it philosophy of if, if they're going to defend their citizens and there's a reasonable probability that they could be wiped out entirely if they don't launch, 
then they hit it uh, defensively. I mean, I don't like to think about it, but uh, it's we all know that when you have, let's say, uh, eight countries or nine in this situation, you've got France, you've got the new ones, uh, India, Pakistan, you've got Britain, Russia, China, United States, each one makes its own decision. And so if any of them uh, think that uh, they could become a victim of a first strike, then they'll probably launch, right? Which guarantees that all of us go down. So it seems to me, actually, Atlantic Research Council, I'm glad that, you know, you researched these issues. And by the way, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to copy this to Laura Richardson at Southcom.